Tyler1 who just started playing this game 9 months ago has just beaten a 2100. Every game he plays the cow opening, pushes this pawn, that pawn, get the knight to this square and then the other knight to that square. He has been doing that for over 1000 games. But this time his opponent knew how to punish him. He played h5. If you play a slow move like bishop here right now, black can punish this cow opening by pushing the pawn to h4 kicking away the knight and you have to go all the way back to f1 and now your development is a mess knight is completely stuck you cannot castle the center was never yours what are you doing but he knew whenever the opponent plays a move like h5 you have to respond with h4, simply preventing the push. But there is a problem. When you push this pawn two squares, this square becomes a weak square, as the knight can hop in, and you cannot push this pawn to h3 to kick away the knight. Black continued taking the center. Tyler went for bishop e2. He likes to put the bishop here, knight here, and castle it out. g6 came in, and now Tyler decided to play e4, try to challenge for the center. It's a big question. Do you want to push? Do you want to take? Or do you want to just protect? If you take, white can take back with either of the knights or the pawn and white is fine. If you push, the problem is you give away this square, the knight can hop in and maybe white can castle. Also play f4, try to attack e5 and open up the f file. So every move black chooses is a problem. So he decided bishop here. Just take back with the bishop and do not do anything. Bishop f3 came in looking at this pawn. If the queen goes away, maybe he takes this pawn, pokes the knight and the bishop. Got to be careful about this pawn. Now black played a strange move. Bishop h6. Not something I would play. I would rather go bishop here, castle shot, or maybe get the queen out, long castle. Not sure what the idea behind is. Like whenever the knight moves away, you really do not want to trade this bishop for that bishop. But surprisingly, black was fine with it. The problem with trading the dark square bishop is. Now, all the dark squares are weak for black. He can never ever short castle. And when he castles long, the queen is ready to hop into g5. And if the rook goes away to h6, g7, enter and attack. And as you can see, as soon as the bishop was gone, Tyler saw the problem and put the queen on g5, free tempo attacking the knight. After the knight went away, you know the problem, all these dark squares are weak. There goes the queen, ready to go to g7, attack the rook, knight, pawn, it's time for queen to party. Also remember the d5 square, as I said, when the queen goes away, pawn takes pawn is on the card. So actually if it's white to play, he can simply take the pawn, win the knight or the bishop. So black pushed it, saving the material. And in this moment, Tyler blundered. He thought knight here was a problem, maybe hopping into c2 and being problematic. So he played a3, preventing it. But now only one pawn protects the knight. Black could have simply taken the knight and won a pawn on b3, simply being pawn up. Also attacking b2, d3, too much stuff for black. But his opponent decided to go for a5, trying to get a4 to kick the knight and maybe take on b2. Tyler did not care. He castled. Get your a4. I do not care. You might be surprised to know, taking this b2 pawn is a very risky idea. Because you are planning to castle long, what will happen? White can go to b1, open up the b file. If he takes a3, look at this rook, 7th heaven for the rook, queen is already there. I don't think black will survive this. And if black is extra greedy, takes on c2, white can get the other rook in. And where is the queen going? To a2? You can take on b7 you can take on c5 both the rooks are so active all these pawns don't matter so his opponent decided to castle first and then after the knight hopped in attacking the queen and the pawn now he decided to remove the knight and go for the greedy b2 grab here white can already go b1 look to enter but first, Tyler went queen g7. He wants to take on f7. That way, rook b1 threatens a mate on b7. It's always a good idea to hide your threats. For example, if you play rook here right now, giving away a3 or c2 doesn't matter. And this time when you go g7, 
he knows he want to take on f7 to win b7 and he'll defend it but by shuffling the order and going g7 first instead of b1 you're hiding the idea let's say he does something dumb you take on f7 and now he does another dumb move you can go to b1 attack the queen attack the pawn and suddenly white is completely winning so playing queen here was a very evil plan black was careful went back and saved the pawn and now tyler went crazy this was the safe way but he wanted to sacrifice the knight a knight sacrifice on the corner just to get the bishop into the play queen is ready to go in bishop is ready to go in rook is ready to go in three attackers incoming black took another pawn he took on f7 getting the bishop to this diagonal rook is ready maybe put the bishop on d5 attack the knight and the pawn black was so greedy he kept grabbing pawns after pawns after pawns he took another pawn and this was too much can you pause and find the winning tactic for white so look for moves with free tempo bishop here is the way you open up the file for the queen the bishop is looking there you give a check once the king moves away use the tempo rook b1 threatening a mate in one and what happens after he defends the mate on b7 this is the way the bishop comes to d5 attacking the queen threatening a mate in this position black resigned but what if black saves the queen white can simply sacrifice the rook on b7 black cannot take as queen takes is a mate and the king cannot run go to c8 mate in one go to a8 disco check into another mate and this is how t1 beat a chess master